Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh. I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix new user tutorial. All right, well first off, welcome to Matrix. For many of you, this may be the first time you've actually seen the system. And while each of you will probably have your own unique needs and individual workflow, there are a few essential things that you need to do before you get started. Now, as any veteran Matrix user will tell you, this system is extremely customizable. So today we're gonna to begin by taking a look at each of the following items that you'll need to configure before working with any of your contacts. But before I begin, I'd like to mention that because each MLS has slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using during this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same and for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. Now I'm gonna take for granted that everyone knows how to log into the system, so we'll start by inserting our user ID and our password, then click login to begin. All right, so the first thing that every new Matrix user will need to do is set their contact information. Now this is the information that will be publicly displayed to all of your current clients and new prospects, so it's very important that whatever you add here is accurate. So to do this, we're going to select the settings option located under the My Matrix tab. Now the My Matrix section is your area in Matrix. Think of it as a repository for not only the things that you've created for yourself, but also a collection of whatever you've created for your contacts. Next, we're going to click on the My Information link. Now typically, whatever information that's currently there has already been pulled from the MLS roster. So if the field's editable, then you just want to ensure that the default information is correct, as well as update any additional field that may be empty. All right, beside the information tab is the header and footer banner collection. And here's where you can choose how you would like to brand any publicly viewed items such as printed reports and displays, your client's desktop portal, and if you have one, your desktop matrix web page. Now by default, if you choose not to select a banner, matrix will automatically just include your name in the item's heading. If, however, you'd like to add some personal branding, matrix gives you the option of either uploading a custom header and footer of your own, or of selecting from one of the available default packages. And from here, you'll notice that Matrix automatically includes whatever contact information is currently saved in the My Information section. But if you'd like to add a photo, you'll need to upload that from this page as well. All right, so I mentioned earlier that one of the places that your branding appears is in the client's desktop portal. Now with Matrix, a client portal is simply a repository for the content that you've already sent to a customer. But because your client may not have access to a desktop computer, Matrix also provides a mobile version of the portal for them to view as well. And you'll notice that not only does the header look different on the mobile device, but the information that's displayed here is also different. So back in the mobile header section of Matrix, you'll need to specify using the dropdown lists exactly what information you'd like to display on your client's mobile portal as well. All right, so moving on to this next section, here's where you're able to set the default contact information that you'd like to appear on the cover sheet of each of the CMAs that you create. In addition to these details, you can also choose to upload a brand new or use an existing photo that you'd like to appear on the cover sheet as well. In fact, at this point, whether you choose to include your personal information or not, you'll still have the opportunity to add or override it during the cover sheet step of the CMA wizard process. All right, so under the portal information tab, you'll find a collection of drop-down lists that contain whatever details you choose to include in the information section. From here, simply select the specific contact information that you'd like to appear on your client's desktop portal, or in the mobile version, under the view more info link. Now, if you'd also like to include other available links that allow your users to search additional listings, simply select whatever checkbox applies and it will appear below your contact information. All right, so whenever you choose to send any content to a client, you'll also have the option of including a default email signature along with your message. Now this is an HTML-based signature, which essentially means that you can add HTML elements such as links, images, tables, and formatted text. For this example, I'm gonna recreate my current signature just to show you how easy it is to add one of your own. To begin, I'm first gonna click the image button and then select from one of my existing photos that I've already added elsewhere in the system. In addition to this, you can also add a URL that points directly to the actual image stored elsewhere on the web. 
Next, I'm simply going to add whatever text that I'd like to include in my signature. In this case, my name, my title, a contact number, and finally, my email address. Now at this point, because my email is currently just text, we're going to want to make this a clickable link for our recipient. And to do that, simply highlight the text and then select the link button. Now, if this had been a link to my company website, I'd simply leave it at URL and fill in the website address. But because this is an email link, we're going to change the link type to email and then add my address, an optional subject line, and finally, some default body text. All right, so after you click on OK, use the available formatting tools to adjust exactly how you'd like your text to appear. In this case, I'm going to use the bold option so that my name stands out just a little bit more. OK, so the final step that I'd like to discuss is the agent web page section. Now, if you already have an agent website that you're happy with, keep it. The Matrix Agent website is primarily geared toward the agent who may not currently have an internet presence of their own, but might like a personal page to share some information on. Either way, creating your own web page is nearly as simple as setting up an email signature. So we're going to begin by ensuring that our page is enabled, and then that we're happy with the default URL. All right, well next we're going to add a web page title. And this is the text that we'd like to appear in the visitor's browser tab. All right, so in the homepage title section, let's begin by first adding a title that will actually describe the content. And then in the rich text editor window, we'll add the content itself. Now in the interest of time, I'll keep mine short, but just like we did in the email signature, use the editor tools to include HTML-based links, images, tables, and formatted text. All right, below the content window is a sign-up option that allows your website visitors to contact you if they'd like more information. I'll add to this that any requests that you receive from here will be displayed for you in the contact request widget found on the Matrix home page. Now, if you've already purchased a domain name that you prefer to use instead of the default web page URL above, then you'll need to enter that address here. This is essentially what tells Matrix to expect this domain and display it in the address bar. In addition to this, you'll also need to contact your registrar and have them forward the domain name to the web page URL. Again, this is so your registrar's server knows exactly what site to send your visitors to. Click Save, and then Preview to review exactly what you've done. All right, so before moving on, there's one more feature that technically should also be mentioned as part of Settings, and that's adding a portal greeting, which is essentially a welcome message to each of your contacts in their portal. Now keep in mind that this is a global message to all of your contacts. And it can be used to share information such as professional details, recent news alerts, out of the office contact information, or maybe just a welcome message and a friendly hello. All right, so speaking of contacts, let's take a look in this next section how simple it is to create, then edit a contact in Matrix. Now to do this, we're first going to select contacts from the My Matrix tab. Then from the contacts management page, click add on the button bar. Now there are only three pieces of required information you need to add a brand new contact to the system. Their first name, last name, and finally their email address. And if you'd like, you can add up to an additional four emails simply by separating each of the addresses with a comma. You can also add any of the following optional information by clicking the show all fields button. Then once you've finished entering the details, Click Save. Now, if you have several contacts that you'd like to add as a group, rather than one by one, then you'll need to import them as a CSV file. To do this, simply click Import on the button bar, select the CSV file from your computer, then click Import. Now, the CSV file that you import needs to use identical fields to the ones that are used in Matrix, so it's very important that your names match up exactly. For example, Here's the CSV file that I just used to import my four contacts. Notice that the field names at the top are exactly what the Matrix database expects. To download your own copy of these fields, you'll need to select one of your existing contacts, click on the Export Selected button, and then save the file to your computer. And when you open it, 
you notice that the field names are included in the heading. From here, simply remove the exported contacts information from the file and then fill in the fields for the group of contacts that you'd like to import. Now, all of that being said, if you're an agent that is brand new to Matrix and are coming over from another system, then your contacts will generally be transferred automatically as well. So at this point, you really just want to verify that the information was brought over correctly. And if you do need to edit a contact, simply expand the Contacts Management section, then click Edit Contact on the button bar. All right, so this next section is mainly geared toward those same brand new agents coming over from another system. Now typically, along with your contacts, the criteria used to automatically send new or updated listings to your customers will be brought over from your previous system as well. However, by default, this criteria will only be imported into Matrix as a save search that needs to be run manually. So if you'd like Matrix to continue to automatically email your customers with new or updated listings that match their criteria, then you'll need to convert the imported save search into an auto email. Now there are a couple of different ways to access your imported searches in Matrix. The first way would be to navigate to the save searches page under the My Matrix tab. And from here, simply click on whatever save search you'd like to modify. The second method of converting a save search into an auto email is by accessing the specific contact save searches in the contact section of My Matrix. But regardless of which approach you use, the first thing you'll need to do is select the settings button. And from here, simply click the turn the save search into an auto email link. And once your mandatory and optional settings are complete, Click on Save to create your new auto email. On a final note, to avoid your customer automatically receiving these listings twice, you'll also need to ensure that you've disabled them from being sent in your previous system as well. All right, so the final feature that I'd like to discuss, I've actually left until the end since it really only applies to new users who are interested in setting up or being a part of a team. So to access the team functionality in Matrix, under the My Matrix tab, click on Settings and then Team Settings. Now in Matrix, agents have the option of either being a team leader or a team member. As a team leader, an agent can invite other agents to join their team by first entering the team member's ID, and then by choosing the credentials they'd like to give them. Now by selecting the impersonate option, any action taken by this team member in my system will appear as if it was actually taken by me, their team leader. For example, any reports and emails that they sent to my contacts will display my name, my email address, my header and footer, and my email signature. On the other hand, when selecting on behalf of me, then it will be very clear to the recipient that the action that they took was taken by them on behalf of me. But regardless of which option you choose, when a team member switches to work under your system, they will have access to everything. That means any data that's accessible to you, the team leader, will also be accessible to that team member. And finally, on the flip side, if an agent has added you as a member of their team, then you'll need to access their system by first clicking on your name in the header and then selecting which team leader system that you'd like to access. All right, well, this concludes the Matrix New User Tutorial. For additional videos or to download a copy of the Matrix Quick Start Guide, follow the link below. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you can join me for another session. Take care.